Spanning the Columbia River between two bustling cities, a century-old bridge stands as both a symbol of progress and a relic of the past. Today, this aging bridge is burdened by mounting traffic congestion, safety hazards, and the ever-looming threat of a seismic catastrophe. Beneath its steel frame lies a story of resilience, but also an urgent call for transformation. After decades of discussions, the stage is finally set for change now. Efforts are currently underway to build an entirely new and better bridge. But with a price tag in the billions and no shortage of political and logistical hurdles, can this ambitious endeavor live up to its promise? Let's find out. Join us today as we delve into America's $7.5 billion battle to rebuild a collapsing bridge. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. The Interstate 5 Bridge, better known as I-5 Bridge, is a pair of nearly identical steel bridges that carry Interstate 5 traffic over the Columbia River between Vancouver, Washington and Portland, Oregon. The present-day northbound bridge opened to traffic in 1917 as a single bridge carrying two-way traffic. As traffic increased after World War II, a second twin bridge, which carries southbound traffic, opened in 1958. It was designed to accommodate early 20th century transportation needs. As the first automobile bridge across the Columbia River between Washington and Oregon, it played a crucial role in the region's development, originally charging a toll of 5 cents per vehicle. Presently, the I-5 bridge receives nearly 50 million vehicles every year. As the only continuous north-south interstate on the west coast, it supports over 138,000 vehicles daily, including significant freight traffic. Essential industries like agriculture, technology, and manufacturing depend heavily on this bridge, making it a vital piece of the region's economic infrastructure. The original bridge was constructed with 13 steel spans, three of which measured 275 feet in length, while the other 10 were slightly shorter at 265 feet each. The piers were stabilized by wooden piles driven about 70 feet into the riverbed. One of the most distinctive features was the lift span, which could be raised up to 176 feet to accommodate river traffic. The towers supporting this lift span stood at an impressive height of 190 feet. Additionally, the bridge's deck included a 38-foot-wide roadway alongside a 5-foot-wide pedestrian sidewalk. A second span was later added parallel to the original structure, designed with a humpback shape that allowed 72 feet of clearance, reducing the frequency of lift operations. Once this span was completed, the original bridge was temporarily closed to undergo similar upgrades. In its present form, the bridge extends a total length of just over 3,500 feet, with the main lift span measuring 531 feet. This lift span remains active, with each operation lasting approximately 10 minutes and opening about 20 to 30 times each month to facilitate river traffic. Over the decades, the I-5 bridge has become increasingly inadequate. Efforts to address the bridge's shortcomings date back to the early 2000s, with numerous studies and proposals highlighting the need for a replacement. One of the key reasons for building a new bridge is to enhance its ability to withstand earthquakes. The current bridge is at high risk of severe damage or even collapse in the event of a major seismic event. This vulnerability arises in part because some of its foundations are supported by wooden piles embedded in the sandy riverbed, which could prove unstable during an earthquake. Located within the Cascadia subduction zone, an area where powerful earthquakes reaching magnitudes of up to 9.0 are possible, the bridge's structural weaknesses present a significant safety concern. Upgrading the bridge to modern seismic standards is essential to ensure its stability and protect lives in the event of such a natural disaster. Another reason for the new bridge is to decrease traffic. The existing bridge is a notorious bottleneck, with frequent congestion during peak hours. Its limited capacity, combined with high traffic volumes, results in delays that cost the region millions of dollars annually in lost productivity and fuel consumption. Moreover, 
The drawbridge mechanism, which requires periodic openings to accommodate river traffic, creates additional safety risks and disrupts traffic. Replacing the bridge with a fixed span structure would eliminate these hazards and enhance safety for all users. Additionally, the bridge's limited walkways and lack of dedicated lanes hinder safe travel for pedestrians and cyclists. Attempts to address these issues culminated in a collaborative bi-state initiative involving Oregon and Washington. Known as the Interstate Bridge Replacement Program, the project envisions a state-of-the-art replacement bridge that meets the region's current and future transportation needs. A new timeline for the project, with the start of environmental review in 2020 and construction by 2025, was approved by the Joint Committee in late 2019. As of December 2022, the project was estimated to cost $5.5 billion to $7.5 billion. The IBR program will be funded from mechanisms like federal grants, tolling, and state contributions, with current commitments including $2.5 billion in prospective federal grants, $217 million in existing state funding, and $1 billion contributions from both Oregon and Washington. Tolling is expected to raise the final $1.2 billion. The IBR program will use variable rate tolling based on time of the day to generate revenue and manage traffic demand. Several toll scenarios have been studied, including possible discounts for low-income travelers, with toll rates projected between $1.50 and $3.55 at the start, although these rates are subject to change. As for the design of the new bridge, the proposed designs include six different options that are currently under consideration. One of these is the extra-dosed bridge, which features low-profile towers and cables designed to avoid interfering with the airspace of nearby Portland International Airport and Pearson Airfield. A similar concept is the Finback Bridge, which replaces cables with concrete-encased fins, while also keeping tower heights within the required limits. Another option, the concrete bridge resembles the Glen Jackson Bridge, utilizing large concrete supports to span greater distances. The Steel Girder Bridge offers a lighter alternative with a similar overall shape. The truss bridge design stands out by incorporating two levels, with the highway on the upper deck and dedicated lanes for public transit and pedestrians on the lower deck. This design not only maintains a slimmer profile, but also avoids airspace conflicts. Lastly, the movable steel girder bridge includes a lift span to accommodate maritime traffic, although it would require dredging to ensure sufficient clearance. While the IBR team also explored the possibility of constructing a tunnel, they concluded that this option would be extremely expensive, with additional concerns about soil stability and potential environmental impacts. While the urgent need for a new, functional bridge is widely acknowledged, controversy surrounds the additional components of the project, fueling debates over design, costs, and broader implications. A previous effort to replace the structure known as the Columbia River Crossing Project sought to address congestion issues on the interstate bridge. Early estimates placed the cost between $2 billion and $3.4 billion, but a 2010 independent analysis warned the price tag could soar to $10 billion by 2008. The plan's locally preferred alternative proposed building a new I-5 bridge with a light rail extension. Vancouver's mayor supported the light rail as a cost-effective connection to Portland, but opponents raised concerns about environmental impacts, suburban sprawl, and escalating costs. By 2013, Washington had withdrawn funding leading Oregon to shut down the project altogether. When the current interstate bridge replacement project emerged in 2017, some critics claimed it was a rebranding of the failed Columbia River crossing. Skepticism grew as less than 30% of the projected multi-billion dollar cost was allocated to the bridge itself. At the time, the replacement bridge was estimated to cost only around $1 billion dollars with the majority of the budget dedicated to freeway widening and interchange reconstruction. Another issue revolves around tolling, as the current bridge has no tolls in place. 
A previous analysis suggested that introducing even a modest toll of $3 could permanently reduce traffic on I-5 to fewer than 90,000 vehicles per day. While this might alleviate congestion on the new bridge, it could place additional pressure on the nearby Glen Jackson Bridge, located just six miles away, as well as increased traffic on other roadways throughout Portland and Vancouver. Although we highlighted the drawbacks of the bridge, it's evident that replacing it is a necessity, a point on which both supporters and critics of the project agree. The real debate lies in the specifics of the bridge's design and the additional developments tied to the project. As of November 2024, the program is progressing through environmental reviews and design phases, and if it does receive final approval, Construction is anticipated to begin in late 2025 or early 2026. Should the project proceed, the new bridge will undoubtedly be a significant and ambitious undertaking, regardless of the final design chosen. What are your thoughts on this mega project? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.